Hi there. Um, as you have noticed from the title of this video, this is definitely going to be a different kind of video. I feel like um, it'd be good just to give y'all an update in terms of what has been happening with my life. Um, just if y'all are interested, you know, um, just because I feel like there's been so much that's been happening. It's, it's, it's insane. And I, I kind of just want to lay it out on the table because I feel like I've kind of been holding it in myself and I, I know that's not good. Um, so I, I kind of just want to give you all the life update, maybe some rants yapping about stupid shit. Um, but yeah, so if you want to stick around for that, um, that is what this video is going to be about. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, um, let me just go ahead and I guess get started. So I guess ultimately many of you that are watching may or may not know that at one point I was a college student, right? When me and John started the, the, the Digital Kingdom channel, um, I think I was still a college student at that time. I think John was just getting into college, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that, but um, but yeah, um, this year, uh, being 2024, I I graduated. Um, I graduated in, in the middle of May with a Bachelor's of Science in Cybersecurity, which is great, you know? Um, it's a big stepping stone into my life, and you know, it's like, hey, you're an adult now, you know? You got big things ahead of you, but um, pretty much, you know, ever since the start of 2024, I've, I've kind of had bad luck, I guess, trying to find something that I can do straight out of college, right? Because I feel like the job market is kind of in a spot, it, it's in a weird spot in my opinion, where it's like, I feel like there is oversaturation, you know, but also at the same time, you know, I, I see, you know, when I, when I go to apply, like I see all these companies that are entry level positions, but they, they're requiring so fucking much. It's like, why the fuck do I need, you know, five years of experience just to get paid like 17 an hour or, you know, even the more infamous example where it's like, you know, um, people getting a master's degree, but you know, and it's like, that's what some of these entry level jobs require, but how the fuck are you going to have a master's degree and then get bitch slapped by being told, Hey, I'm only going to pay you like $15 an hour for this shit. It's, it's like, to me, I don't know. It, 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 it's weird. It doesn't make sense to me. I've never really kind of understood that. I, I think ultimately it's just trying, it's just companies trying to squeeze their employees for all their juice. You know what? Like, like, I, I guess their mindset is like, what, how can we most utilize our employees get the most production out of them with the least amount of cost you know i and i think personally that's kind of how a lot of companies think again it, it, you know it, it's business i get it but it, it just fucking sucks you know especially in the tech realm like you know like honestly you could probably go be a a, a burger flipper at, at mcdonald's and still be getting paid more than, than some of these kids coming out of um out of college with a with a fucking master's trying to get something in, in the tech realm you know um but, you know, it, I don't know. So that was kind of my, my struggle. You know, I unfortunately wasn't able to land any internships. Those are very competitive. You kind of really actually have to make yourself stand out. I was unfortunately not able to get anything with that. And, you know, I've been trying to apply to jobs, you know, up until the point of graduation, you know. Um, again, just trying to see if there's anything I can get. You know, maybe once I graduate college, you know, maybe I can go into some kind of full-time job, you know, that was, that was my mindset, you know, um, just kind of hit the ground running, I guess, with that, but, um, ultimately, that unfortunately did not pan out, I unfortunately was not able to get a job during that time, yeah, so, and I, I, I think the reason I, I stressed over that so much was because my parents are good people, they're supportive of me, um, you know, but I think, you know, I, I think their worry for my, future and just my success in the future, I guess, is kind of driving them to be a little drastic, a little dramatic, I would say, in my opinion. Um, and again, you know, I, I love my parents, you know, I, I think the world of them and, you know, they've, they've gone through many hardships and I, I know, I know at the end of the day, they don't want to see their own child suffering. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get that, you know? Um, but at the same time, it was just kind of a thing where, there was certain expectations, I guess, thrust upon me where it's like, hey, you 
need to have a job at a college. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause you know, there, there was that certain time where I'm just like, if I don't have a, you know, if I don't have a good job right at a college, like I'm going to be looked at as a failure, you know? And, you know, I, and I understand that that wasn't their intention, you know, like I know that they just want me to do good. They want me to succeed in life. And, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of went into that, that are, you know, um, just good intentions, but bad execution, I would say, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so there was that, you know, I graduated college. I wasn't able to find a job and, or up until that point, I wasn't able to find a job. And that kind of, that, that really discouraged me for, for a good bit. Um, and then, yeah, so, you know, ultimately, uh, kind of a little bit before I had graduated, maybe like a week before, right? It kind of dawned on me and just this random thought popped into my head. It's like, Hey, why not join the military? You know, they have pretty good cyber stuff, you know, um, having any kind of military experience is highly favored in the, in the civilian world. So I'm like, Hey, you know, maybe I should go down the military route and just see what happens. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so I go to try to enlist in the air force, right? So, you know, I, I go talk to the recruiter. I get that set up. Yeah. So I, I go talk to them. I kind of let them know the situation with everything. And I believe it was May 15th is when I got my wisdom teeth removed. So because of that, my recruiter said, Hey, you know, we can't really do anything with you for a month because that is technically surgery. That is like something you have to recover from for at least a month before we can do anything with you. So I'm like, okay, you know, that is what it is. So, um, so, you know, I get my wisdom teeth removed and, you know, during the time of recovery, I am basically, you know, um, still working my part-time job for a little bit, um, at, at, the, at a gym center. And, you know, I'm, I'm studying for this thing called the ASVAP. So, uh, to those who are not familiar with the processes of the military, the ASVAP is basically a dumbed down SAT, um, to, to put it simply. So it, it tests, um, I want to say nine or 10 different areas. Um, so you do kind of have to study a little bit, but there's really like four main areas that you have to to, to focus on to study. And then after that, um, it'll kind of branch off into different kinds of areas that um, you are supposed to focus on because those areas are going to be what determines what kind of jobs you get. And that's the thing that kind of sucks with the military because it's like you, you know, you have to, well, I mean, I, I get you have to study because obviously, you know, with, with some of these kids, you know, they may not score the best. And with that, you know, they're placed into, you know, lower level jobs, I would say, but you know, to those that do study, do better, um, they have the opportunity to be able to have a, a wider variety of jobs to choose from, most of which are highly desired, you know? So me being a recent graduate student and me being a cybersecurity major, um, I did study, you know, I, I did fine on that. Basically I got a 96 overall. The scoring criteria is a little weird. Um, it's not like, it's not like, oh, you didn't really good on the entire test. So you get a 96. It's more of a percentile. So that 96 just, just says that, Hey, you did better than the average test taker of someone who is between the ages of 18 and 24. Now, mind you, at the time of recording this, I am 23 and just kind of going through this whole process. Um, I've been 23, right? So, um, so yeah, you know, I get, I get an on a six, I, you know, um, on the ASVAB, you know, that that's whatever. Um, and I, and that was taken in June, uh, kind of mid June, if I'm not mistaken. So mid June comes around, I take that, I do good on it. Um, I have the opportunity to basically choose whatever jobs I want. And obviously, you know, being me, um, with the cybersecurity degree, I want to choose jobs that are more aligned with what I'm trying to do. Cause my goal with the military was, you know, get in there, do my four years, come out and try to get a high paying job, you know, cause I feel like, again, a lot of these companies are looking for experience, but you know, how are you going to get experience if they're not giving you the opportunity to, 
get that experience you know what i'm saying like there i don't know i feel like there has to be some kind of trade-off with that essentially but um but yeah so you know joining the military for experience that that is what it is um i do get on my asvap and then the next day comes around you know 6 a.m i have to be up at the military or i have to be up at meps which is the military entrance processing station um so that's where pretty much all the military stuff happens in terms of how you get in so yeah so at meps i take my asvap next day 6 a.m i gotta be there and do my physical that's basically you know things like a hearing test a vision test a blood test just to make sure i guess you're not doing uh or don't have like aids h or um just any kind of scd i guess it's kind of how they explain it to me um then they have you do a, a urine test for for drugs um they sit you down in a the classroom they go over a powerpoint of what's to be expected in the in the full process of everything um they do a breathalyzer test so just you know just as long as you aren't drinking and being dumb right before your physical um yeah and then um yeah so i guess another big thing with with my physical in particular so i am a five foot eight male and there is a very specific weight requirement so um, the max weight that you can be as a five foot eight male is 180 pounds. Um, so me being, I think I was about 190, you know, uh, cause during that time I was eating soups, liquids, kind of trying to get my weight down. Cause I think before I got my wisdom teeth removed, I think I was close to about like 205, 207 maybe. So, you know, in the span of about a month of, you know, recovering, trying to get my weight down, um, I was able to get it down to about 190, give or take, uh, without clothes or anything. So, um, so yeah, when, you know, when I go to step on the scale, cause they do height, weight requirements, as well as blood pressure. That's also another thing I forgot to mention. They do that. Um, so they, they check that and then, um, they, they put me with a group of other kids who I guess don't fit the, the, the weight requirement quote unquote for, um, their respective heights. So, you know, I, I get put with them and then I get thrown into this, um, this little doctor's office where, um, they basically measure the circumference of my neck and the circumference of my waistline. So that way they can determine a body fat percentage because, um, even though I'm technically in, at least in the, in, in the standards of the military overweight, um, they offer the opportunity to kind of bypass that by getting a body fat percentage check. Um, and that has to be, I think, at least under 25%, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at least for the Air Force. I don't remember, I don't know what it was for the Army, but I'll get to that point later on. So, um, but yeah, so I'm doing my physical. I get cleared. I think I had like a 23% body fat. So I was good to go on that front. So, I go through the entire physical process and then I get to the last part where it's pretty much just a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the doctor. Um, they have you do a couple of things, but then they'll set you down and they'll be like, you know, they'll go through everything, go through your medical history, um, any concerns that you may have. Um, so yeah, so I, I go through this consultation. The last thing that he lets me know is that, hey, there seems to be something up with your eyes. It seems like a small astigmatism doesn't seem to be that bad. Um, because of this, we can't, you are not technically medically qualified. Right now you are medically unqualified or medically unfit, one of the two. Um, but he said like, oh, you know, it's super easy to get a waiver for this. So I'm like, okay, so it, it, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Okay, so, you know, it is what it is. So, um, so for the time being, I'm basically set as medically unfit and that information gets sent back to my recruiter. So um, after that, my recruiter is like, hey, you know, for the time being, you're gonna have to wait until there's an opening for um, for a consultation, which is basically just, you know, going, up, going back up to MEPS and going to a facility or some kind of doctor's office, some kind of eye care specialist that can take a look at you. So I'm like, okay, you know, we do that. It is what it is, so. Um, and then, again that was like mid-june i think the last week of june is when i had an eye exam just just on my own just to update my prescription it wasn't anything to do with the military so 
And then I'm asking the doctors about it, and it's like, is it, you know, is, is an astigmatism really that big of a deal? And they're like, well, not really. It's like, you know, that's kind of what glasses are for, just to kind of help with the balancing of that, you know? Even though you may have an astigmatism, the eye, they're, the glasses that I have and the prescription with that is supposed to help, um, it's supposed to help correct that. So I'm like, okay, there really shouldn't be any big issues then from what I understand. So I'm like, okay. So unfortunately I wait all of July and then I think it's the first week of August is when I finally hear back from my recruiter. Um, because the thing about the government and the military is that they do kind of take a while to do things, which, which actually sucks, you know, especially with me, since I feel like I'm on such a tight timeline with things right now. Um, so, you know, I, I get called back in, I go up to MEPS again. Um, we take like a little shuttle and they drop us off at some kind of eye care facility. So, um, it's basically just like a normal checkup. They do scans of your eyes. Um, they do a vision test, um, try to get like a general prescription that they're looking at. And, you know, based on everything, the doctor said, I'm, I'm okay. So I was like, okay, I guess that seems fine. Um, so, you know, I leave that doctor's office thinking like, okay, you know, I have nothing to worry about. I should be okay. Well, come next week, I find out that apparently there, for whatever reason, on, on the actual um, disqualification letter, it says unspecified astigmatism. And for that reason, um, they were worried that it could be something that maybe develops and gets worse as I'm in the military. Which I get is understandable, but you have to remember, I'm going in for a cybersecurity job that's going to be mainly desk work. Like, I'm not going to be a, a fighter pilot or any anything like that, you know. I am simply just going in for a desk job that's not really going to be that physically intensive. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just, it just disappoint me, you know. I'm just, I don't know, like, I, I, like, I, I was very upset with that like you know what i'm saying like it just to me it just didn't make any sense and i think i got that disqualification letter like mid-august so so you know the day that i get that disqualification uh, disqualification letter from the air force i'm like you know what fuck it they let anybody basically into the army let me go try the army they have cyber jobs and stuff up there um and you know i go i go to speak with the army recruiter they let me know like oh yeah like it's just an astigmatism like it doesn't seem that big of a deal We'll try to get you in. Let's see what we can do. Because we'll, cause come to find out, um, the Air Force is very picky about who they let in. Because I feel like the Air Force just has higher standards in terms of who they let in and who they deny. So I'm like, okay, you essentially have to be perfect in order to get into the Air Force. But I'm like, okay, maybe the Army will give me a better shot. So I go through the process of trying to get in, you know, um, they, they pull my ASVAP scores, they pull my, my, um, my physical results and they submit it, you know, so within the next week they tell me, Hey, you need to go get your eyes checked real quick, just to make sure you don't have something called uh, keratoconus, which I believe is the thinning of something in your eyes that like, I guess could get worse over time. And I think that's when it finally clicked with me. That's like, oh, you know, that's probably what the Air Force was worried about. But, you know, but, um, you know, so I, I get that scheduled with my eye doctor, right? Because they don't want to wait for the, the military because I feel like to this day, I'd still be fucking waiting on, on their shit to get me in, you know. So they want me to get images of my eyes and basically just confirm in terms of whether or not I have it. Um, cause it, it sounded like I had it in one eye, but they wanted to make sure I didn't have it in both. Um, so I go to the eye doctor, they take my images and they tell me like, you know, everything honestly looks okay. Um, while it does appear to be signs of it forming, it shouldn't give you any problems. Now there shouldn't be any problems, you know, getting into the military with this. Um, so I'm like, okay, so there, there shouldn't be any issue. I don't know what the big hubbub is about, you know? So... I get that turned in and, you know, my recruiter sends it off. And then, unfortunately, again, I get disqualified because of possible keratoconus in my eyes that could get worse over time with the military. And honestly, I think at this point, I think I've kind of just come to the conclusion that they just don't want it on their hands. They don't want to have to deal with that shit. 
um and it's just well i don't i don't know i don't know at this point like i yeah i don't know when i got that disqualification later i i i don't know that was maybe about a week ago now at the time of recording this um yeah so you know i i got that disqualification letter and i'm just like well if two branches are going to disqualify me because of some bullshit in my eyes that I feel like really isn't that big of a deal compared to other things out there. It's just not worth it, you know? So I, I had thought about joining the Navy for about 30 minutes. I did my research and I was like, you know, maybe the military just isn't for me. So, you know, I had to break the news about that to my wife. And also that's another thing. So, uh, that I forgot to mention. So during this whole process, um, a couple days after I got my wisdom teeth removed, uh, me and my now wife, uh, former fiance, um, got married uh, because we got married because there are certain benefits in the military that you can receive um, if you are married. So, for example, you have the option to live off base with your spouse or any other dependents. So, for example, in my case, um, I now have a stepson, technically, um, although he's not technically mine, I haven't adopted him or anything because... Uh, the biological father is still in the picture um you know what i'm saying like it's it's like a basically a, a stepson relationship that i have with him but like on paper technically not if that makes sense so um but yeah so i have a wife and a stepson now essentially so yeah so we got married try to get those benefits and do i regret marrying her absolutely not she has been my my anchor throughout all of this um and i feel like she's the one that has uh, truly been supporting me even when it, you know, sometimes it feels like, it feels like my parents have not and again you know I don't want to rag on my parents you know I, they're good people I think they have good intentions just not the best execution of it you know um, and I'm just very I'm very thankful that I have my wife and stepson here to kind of help me get through these these weird times that I'm going through you know um, so yeah so I you know I, I've we get married, we go through that whole process of trying to get into the military. And that has basically fizzled out of existence, you know? So I took it as a sign where it's like, hey, you know, maybe maybe the military life was never for me, you know? So yeah, I don't know. I mean, just, I was upset with that whole process, you know? Because I, I wasted pretty much um, half of May, all of June, all of July, all of August, and basically half of September. So basically four months which is, I guess, like an entire summer was pretty much wasted, you know? And I feel like there could have been so many better things that I could have done with this, with that time. So, understandably, you know, I was upset. I, I just, I don't know, I just, I fell into this weird slump of, you know, just realizing, like, fuck, you know? Like, I don't know, like, I, I knew that I would need to start applying for jobs, so that's kind of what... I've been going ham on here for the last few days and you know I, I just kind of fell into this weird little slump where it's like fuck you know um because I I think you know like I knew it in the back of my head but I, I think I kind of just got a, a splash of cold water and a reality check and it's like hey life is not going to work out the way that you want it to but whatever life throws at you you got to figure out how to make that shit work you know so that was kind of my my wake up call in terms of like damn i need to get my shit together um so that's that's what i've been doing for the past couple or not a couple days past few days now um and then also during this time of when i'm trying to get into the military um john was the first to know about this or aka digital kingdom he was the first to know about uh, my decision going to the military because i feel like um or I guess my wife and stepson obviously were the first to know, but John was the second person to know about that because um, we we run the Digital Kingdom channel together, you know. So obviously, with with me being away from that space, um, there'd be a pretty big gap in the content that we make, you know. Um, like it, we'd have to be at least on I don't know a three four month hiatus essentially, but. Um, you know, so I let them know we stocked up on a bunch of videos and at this time I think we have videos basically up until December um, So we, we have a good amount of videos stocked up, you know, we've got two and a half months worth, right? Um, so That's cool, you know, so we, we have that and I feel like 
that's a saving grace for me as well because I know that I can comfortably step away from content creation for a little bit and just focus on taking care of my family, make sure I get a job. Um, Because, you know, as much as me and John would love to do YouTube full time, I think we both understand that, you know, we both have our respective lives. There are things that both of us need to take care of. You know, right now, YouTube is simply just a hobby and for us to have fun together. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we were to stop YouTube right now, at least at this point in time, because I think that YouTube channel at the time of making this, I think has, I want to say 232 subscribers, you know, so it's, it's not a big channel by any means, you know, um, but I don't think there would really be that many people sad to see it go, you know what I mean? So. And I, and I think a lot of people would understand the decision if it ever came to that, God forbid, you know, um, but it's just right now, you know, I got to focus on getting a job, taking care of my new family um, and just just start getting life moving, you know, and, and especially with John too. like I know he's working. I don't know if he still works full time anymore because um, I know he went back to college for a bit. Um, but yeah, you know, and it's just, you know, again, I think me and him understand that, you know, we both have our respective lives. He understands that I've got my thing to take care of. I, I get that he's got his stuff to take care of, you know, um, which I, you know, again, I just let him know, like, you know, I had this plan to join the military. Let's just stock up on videos. So that way, by the time I come back, hopefully there is stuff that I can go ahead and um, release out to Digital Kingdom. So that way there is content for those who are waiting on it you know um yeah so i don't know yeah so i like yeah it's i'm in kind of a weird state right now i'm not gonna lie um it's just it's been it's been a ride to say the least do i plan on still being the digital kingdom editor obviously of course the question is whether or not I'm going to have time with that because I feel like time is something I just don't feel like is on my side anymore. Um, there have been so many things happening, so many changes in such a short amount of time that it, it truly is overwhelming. And I, I'm surprised that I am somehow uh, still staying afloat in all of this. You know, it's, it's insane to me. Um, like it's, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird. Um, good changes, though. You know, I think there definitely has been more more positivity in my life, you know. Um, but I don't know. It's just like I feel like life has kind of kept kicking me in the balls lately. And, it, you know, I've just been trying to piece myself together, try to make the best out of it and just kind of continue forward and do what needs to be done, you know. So, again... I don't know when I'm going to have time to be able to sit down and edit. Um, but all I can say for right now is I applied to a couple or I applied to a lot of companies. I heard back from two so far. One of them is like a uh, it's like a technology agency where they will take you on and they will train you and then they send you off to help certain clients, I guess in terms of it's it's almost like freelance work i guess is the best way to put it because the thing with with tech nowadays is like you just got to get your hands on anything at this point just to be able to to pass it off as experience and i think i think this is a very good way to do it because that's other things you can add onto your resume well not well it's not going to be cybersecurity related because this tech company they seem more um software engineering so like software development um coding software that kind of thing I have experience in, you know, um, and I mean, I've, I've been coding pretty much all of my, my college career. So that, that's, that's not that big of a deal, but, um, the way I see it, I think it's a very big potential prospect. Um, granted, I don't know if it's like a guaranteed thing right now. I just need to, I still have to take their technical devaluation, which, which I was actually studying for before deciding, Hey, I'm just going to put my thoughts out cause I need to, um, but yeah, so there's that potential prospect, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, and I know ultimately down the line, I think it's going to be worth it. 
again while it may not be exactly cybersecurity related um and that, that's another thing too actually i kind of want to touch on now that i'm thinking about it so in the united states basically a cybersecurity degree essentially just means that you kind of know a little bit of everything so you know when you hear cybersecurity, like there's a lot of things that go into that right you have programming you have networking you have uh, hardware you have software um and, and there's just there's so much there's there there's a lot of aspects in cybersecurity that kind of are encompassed by that you know and because of that you or at least the in the college that i went to they essentially have that mindset of like hey there is so much but let's have you kind of dabble in a little bit of everything you know we'll have you dabble in programming that was kind of the, the i'd say the majority of it um i took a good few networking classes and network administration just so that way you can kind of learn how um just kind of how different devices talk the different kinds of standards with that and then you know with coding it's like okay you can actually do all of that you know you can throw it all together to make cool applications which i've done you know um and then just you know the only thing i, I feel like i'm lacking on definitely is like actual hardware um hardware and software knowledge per se you know i, I feel like my strengths are more networking based and programming based um because i feel like that's kind of what the majority of it was in cybersecurity. and then you you kind of have like different things sprinkled like i took a, a database security class like a computer crime class uh, a forensics class which um i thought was pretty cool um you know so there's 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 a lot involved with cybersecurity. you know what i mean and i feel like it's a bit too broad and i feel like going down this path of software engineering could be good you know um i think it could be something that you know allows me to build up my my skill set a little more with programming and because again like I said with programming, you can always incorporate networking elements into it. And there are things like, um, there are job opportunities out there like security development operations. Technically, it is cybersecurity. You are developing secure programs that can't be hacked, can't be um, uh, misused, uh, that, you know, just in case there's any vulnerabilities, it'd be your job to patch those vulnerabilities. You know, there's, there's so many job prospects, I think, with cybersecurity. But the problem, I think, is let's say for example you get a, a degree in something more specific right something that is say for example embedded systems or maybe ai you know because that's that's pretty up and coming now um i feel like you'd have a much easier time getting a job in a specific field with a specific degree because with that specific degree you're saying that you're a well not like a master per se but like you know a good amount of this stuff that they're trying to do um whereas with cybersecurity, it's like it's almost like saying with that degree you're a master of everything but it's like honestly in the real world have you ever like i personally have never talked to anybody who is a master of everything in that field you know what i'm saying like like i have a feeling there are people who have probably never touched code in their life but they are gods at networking and understanding different kinds of protocols how everything works with that and I, you know, there's people that may do programming, but have never touched any kind of network protocol or never had to do any kind of network programming before, you know? So it's like, again, I feel like while cybersecurity does have its, its pros and cons, I think there is potential for development, but right now it's just like trying to figure out what pathway to go. Cause there's so many. And I, I initially had this pathway set, but now it's like, I kind of come to that realization where it's like, you know, they're not just going to give you that specific job. Like you have to work up from it from a certain level, which, um, so I guess the job I was shooting for is something called a cybersecurity analyst. Basically their job is to kind of monitor in what is called a CM. So it, it's basically a large tool that kind of monitors different kinds of activities. So whether it be uh, program activity, um, desktop activity network activity all all kinds of things right it's going to continuously to monitor logs and what's cool about it is that all of it's like automated all of it is done for you so all you all you really have to do 
is if that program, that CM tool, if it throws something at you that's like, hey, I detected something, you may want to take a look at it. Um, that's really all you have to do. You kind of have to diagnose it. You have to look at it. If there's a fix that you can do, I, uh, I typically it'd be your job to go ahead and implement that. Otherwise, for example, if maybe there's like an actual network attack going on inside of your, your corporation, company, whatever it is, um, and it, it's detecting that, um, you have to basically respond to that threat in, in, in kind. Um, so that was kind of my, my thinking in terms of where I want to start, but, you know, again, it just comes down to experience, you know, because obviously for something like that, I can understand that you have to have experience with a good amount of things because you're going to be protecting a lot of things, a lot of valuable things, you know, because especially with how, uh, how prevalent the internet is nowadays and how everything kind of relies on it more or less, you know, obviously you've got your exceptions, but most businesses nowadays utilize the internet in order to do something and you have to um, protect those servers protect their computers protect just the general infrastructure of whatever it is that a company is utilizing you know um and there's a lot that goes into that because one fuck up can cost you can cost them billions you know what i mean like you have to know your shit you have to be able to know how to do all that you know and i i get that so um so i guess with all that there is another company that reached out to me as well um that i applied to um i actually have an interview with them upcoming on friday but um basically it is for a it help desk position which is basically just um it's definitely more of a lower level kind of position however i think it's going to offer good experience in terms of troubleshooting understanding um actual uh computer parts components different kinds of software and just kind of really getting into troubleshooting why things are not working which i think is a very valuable mindset to be in um pay's not great but ultimately it's just the experience that i care about um so they offered me or they're gonna interview me i guess friday um but yeah no like literally within the same hour that i applied they gave me a thumbs up on zip recruiter and they sent me an email being like hey when do you want to interview so I'm hoping good things from that ultimately, but I kind of also want to see what happens with the software engineer thing because I feel like money wise and possible avenues to go from, I think that might be my best option as of right now. So, um, and like I said, I don't know if, I don't know if that tech company here that I'm doing software engineering for hopefully, um, is, is a guaranteed thing. Um, it just sounds like they're going to have me take an evaluation just to kind of see where I can start out at. And then I guess from that point, they're going to train me and then send me off to do like client work for people, which again, it is what it is. Um, I can always take my PC and my, my laptop and shit, um, to still make content, you know? Um, and then obviously I have my family that I can bring along with me as well. Um, the only thing is again, you know, uh, my stepson currently he's in preschool um he's about to turn five here soon so that's something that me and her are gonna have to kind of talk about a little more and i think i'll probably do that tonight with her um just because i know that's kind of a, a big thing you know definitely moving to different states potentially that's a, that's a that's huge you know ideally i would like to find something around here where i currently am in texas but you know it, it just depends where they need me to go because ultimately at this point, I need experience. I need something that will take care of my family. And I just need to get my career underway. You know, I think that's kind of my main focus right now at this time. So, um, yeah, you know, that's, um, that's kind of where it's at right now, I guess, in my life. Um, I just kind of want to get that all of, all out of my chest, all off my chest and just kind of, I just talk to you guys, I guess, you know, kind of let everybody know, um, kind of what's been going on so that way everybody's aware and everybody is um up to speed i guess with the lore that is my life you know um so yeah you know I, i've already talked to john about it and you know i i let him know kind of for the time being i just need to focus on getting a job we have video stocked up so like worst comes to worst we don't have 
we don't make any videos until like December, for example. Um, and I feel like if that does happen, that should be enough time for me to hopefully get something figured out, you know? Um, but again, I, I just need to see what happens. You know, there's, um, there's been so much happening in, in such a short amount of time. And, you know, I've got two hopefully potential job offers. So I just need to, I need to get all that figured out, you know? Um, but yeah, so, and then also, I guess a side note, if you haven't already noticed, um, Labyrinth of Phobia has pretty much stopped development for the time being. Um, just with, just with so much shit going on, like again, I would love to make video games, but priorities, I, my, I just got to get my priorities right. You know, um, I have been thinking about developing just like a shorter game. That's kind of like Lancaster leak, but more so the main portion quote unquote of the game is, um, just going to be kind of like exit eight or platform eight or anything like that. Um, just learn like a, uh, a spooky observation game that won't be super long. Cause I know with Labyrinthophobia, it's kind of a ambitious project for one person, but, um, I feel like with, with this game, I'm thinking about doing it. It should be less intensive on me being a one man army with this. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So I guess at this time, um, me and John, we're not making videos at the moment. Um, if he wants to record a solo video, um, I will try to find time to, to work on that. Otherwise I created a video and I put it on YouTube. Uh, I set it to private on our channel. Um, so that way John can look at it, learn how to edit videos because I made like a, a good hour long video in terms of how to do that, kind of how I go about it. Um, so that way he has resources and hopefully time to be able to sit down and kind of edit those, those smaller, easier videos, I would say. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's just, it's one of those things where only time is going to tell in terms of what exactly is going to happen, um, with this channel, with the Digital Kingdom channel, uh, with my life, um, with the video games that I'm, I'm hoping to make and all that shit. So, um, but yeah, this is just me kind of getting out my thoughts and just kind of letting you guys know, I guess, kind of what's been happening in the last few months. Um, so yeah, um, I guess if I do get a job or some shit, I'll let you guys know, I'll let y'all know the situation and hopefully, uh, hopefully soon I can get a job, get situated, and start trying to figure out when a good time is to start doing more, more content with John, you know, cause I, I miss it. It's been about, it's been about two weeks since me and him have actually done anything content related, uh, which fucking sucks, you know, but ideally I just need to get my life together right now and hopefully YouTube does good and I can just do YouTube with John full time. That'd be fucking sick. Um, but for right now, um, it's just got a family to take care of, um, got a job to find and got to make a living or do something, man. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I also have a stockpile of videos that I am also going to be releasing on my own channel as well. Um, just because I also stocked up on videos of my own, because again, I thought I was going to the military that didn't pan out. So. I think I want to go ahead and start releasing those videos, uh, just that way it's something, you know, um, just that way you guys are at least entertained for the time being on my channel and as well as the Digital Kingdom channel, so, um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it, just me yapping and talking about things, kind of getting y'all caught up, um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know, I may make more videos like this where I just kind of give y'all updates on everything, um, just depends, you know, if y'all like it. Um, I'll, I'll probably keep doing it. If not, this will probably be the only video that you guys see where I'm going to go on long spiels like this and shit. So, um, but yeah, so I think that really covers it. So, um, yeah, so right now, you know, just trying to find a job, got a family to take care of. Hopefully there's time for video game making. Hopefully there's time for content creation. Um, only time will tell. So. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for listening. Um, hopefully this weird time.
timeline of events has kind of helped clarify anything if y'all had any questions on about you know what's been happening and all that stuff um again i know that i've only got like less than 20 subs i know that the digital kingdom channel only has like 232 subs but i just want to let y'all know that we do love each and every one of you that have been with us um and just thank you so much for your support um we love doing content creation we truly do um but you know it's just we hope that y'all can understand that you know we do have personal lives outside of this right now it's just a hobby um and we want it to grow into something greater hopefully uh like i said only time will tell so um with that my name is digital kingdom editor and i will see y'all soon hopefully goodbye for now and just be on the lookout for any other videos that i may be dropping so um just keep a lookout for those i'll see you guys around